G'day, um, my name's Grant Sims. I uh, run cropping and cattle business Sims Farms just near Echuca in north central Victoria. I also have a seed business down under covers where we design and put together multi-species mixes for, for improving soil health and livestock production. Uh, we started growing cover crops probably over 10 years ago now and we, we kind of found that we could grow large amounts of biomass very, very cheaply with low inputs. Um, so then we thought, how do we sort of utilize this? And that's when we started looking at cattle and we use those cattle as a tool. So if a paddock in, in cropping is underperforming, um, whether it be weed pressure, soil structure, a uh, number of different reasons, we can put the multi species in for two or three years, really prime that soil, get all the roots working, busting open the soil, um, starting to, to get the biology and, and that, that cycling. Then we use the cattle to sort of, you know, we're still harvesting these crops, but we're just using a four-legged harvester, appreciating asset instead of a big green thing that sits in the shed, you know. So it's really exciting. We can get really high production uh, with a pretty well a low input cost while fixing our asset, our soil. So yeah, that, that sort of gets a lot of fun now once we got that cattle integration into our cropping business. How we use the, the cover crops or the multi-species, there's a lot of different ways you can call them, multi-species forages or cover crops, but essentially what it is, is we want diversity. And, um, and, and it doesn't really matter what enterprise you, you do it in. We can use these plants to either suppress weeds, fix nitrogen, unlock phosphorus, you know, get rid of soil uh, root diseases and nematodes, things like that. So there's, there's a, a, a large range um, of reasons why we can use these, improve water holding capacity, carbon sequestration, infiltration. Um, they, they really are a good tool, but essentially why they work, because it's just sort of mimicking nature in a way. Like, uh, you know, when we get out into our cropping and we're growing a monoculture of wheat, you know we're really in nature is that, that natural and, and then all of a sudden we're constantly fighting against nature with weeds and different things, you know. And magic can really happen if we get, you know, four or more plant families and, you know, eight or, or more, you know, some, our winter super mix has got 13, 14 species in it. Um, so they just sort of grow, we become more water and nutrient efficient because we've got a larger, a lot of different root systems now we can explore greater areas of soil. So we've got a lot of different plants in here. There's the ryegrass, clovers, but these radishes, so this is a radish, a smart radish. These have got these big tubers. They'll send it, I've just snapped that off, digging it up, but we've done soil pits on a plant this size at this age and found their roots down 1.5 meters in, so, in depth. So they'll send a tap root down and, and scavenge all the nitrogen, sulfur, different things that leach through the soil profile. And they bring it up and fill these tubers up the top which are really good for them grazing. But then as the cattle or the, this plant dies off, it redistributes those minerals that are leached through the soil back up into the soil surface where we want them in that root zone. Um, and then these, this, is a, this is a turnip. So they're both brassicas. They're good at inoculating the soil. So you'll see the little bulb. It's like a, you know, a bit of a veggie garden here at times, but with these plants, but I don't know if this picks it up, but the, you know, very fibrous lateral root systems with the tap root, but around the, on the soil surface here, well, I can just see a lot of worm castings, like the worm activity really explodes in these paddocks. What we've got here is our, um, where we make all our bifermented liquid fertilizers and also other crop stimulants and things that we use. So um, we brew about two, 100,000 litres a year that we inject in the soil with the seed at sowing, but then we also do a big foliar program and, and foliar that nutrition on. Um, we do a bit of dissolved urea too, so we, we can sort of be more efficient in how we get nitrogen into the plant um, to optimise our crop, crop yields and crop health. Um, so what we have with these brew tanks, we, we'll have, there's three big tanks over there that hold 9,000 litres each, and then there's seven tanks here that hold 5,000 litres each. So we will put a biological source in there, we feed it, 
we lock it up, we multiply the biology in that tank, and then we add the individual sulfates. So, you know, we might have one tank of zinc, one tank of manganese, you know, iron, copper, boron, calcium, phosphorus, you know, all essential minerals at, at different ratios we want them at. They'll be locked up under airtight um, for, you know, a minimum of 30 days, and we're using the biology to help um, sort of chelate or, or you know, make those minerals highly available, plant available. Um, once they've gone through that fermentation um, or brewing sort of process, um, then we will, um, you know, agitate them and filter them all out, and then we mix them all together because um, once they've all, they're all stabilised, we can mix them without them antagonising each other. Um, we'll mix them together, and we're now storing them in these 16,000 litre tanks. Um, we've got cone bottoms so they're easy to keep agitated and get all the, the nutrients out. We make, you know, lactobacillus, all kinds of different stuff where we might use this as a form of our plant nutrition, um, you know, and, and for, if you've got crop disease or insect attack, we, we're finding now instead of having to turn to a fungicide or insecticide, which is just killing things, we focus on, instead of trying to kill things, let's just make things grow better. And we've still got a lot, long way to go and we're still always learning on our farm. And we always, you know, like anyone, there's always challenges with your, whatever system you're running, but that's the sort of fun of farming.